Hi, everybody. Good afternoon. Good evening. Welcome. I'm Kari Ullman. I'm the associate producer at Page 73, and I'm so glad you could join us for this new play conversation with Senaz Tusi about her play, The Persians. This is our eighth and final new play conversation of the season, and we're thrilled to be wrapping things up with Senaz, who is our 2019 Playwriting Fellow here at Page 73. We are so grateful to our community of donors for sticking with us. So we were able to keep working with Sanaz and all of our writers on in-depth processes like this one. As page 73 pushes to come back strong with the live in-person world premieres of John J. Caswell Jr.'s Man Cave and Blue Beckford Burrell's La Ross next year, we are hosting a virtual spring benefit on June 10th to raise crucial funds for these productions. It will be hosted by James Jackson Jr. and John Andrew Morrison, two of the stars of our 2019 co-production of A Strange Loop, Michael R. Jackson's Pulitzer Prize winning musical. And we will be joined by our community of playwrights and artists, including Senaz herself. And you can learn more about our spring benefit on our webpage, page73.org slash spring benefit. Now, I want to tell you a little bit about the virtual residency process that we've undertaken here with Sanaz, with our director, Peron Yusefzada, and a fantastic group of actors. During the pandemic, Page 73 created a workshop model that allows our writers to make real progress on writing new plays despite working virtually over their screens. We took what is usually a four or five day process in person and extended it over two weeks, meeting on Zoom for about three hours a day, along the way with some days off as well. This helped us fight Zoom fatigue, at least we hope it did, and also gave our playwright time in between rehearsals to really marinate on the work her team was doing. And I'm so grateful to the actors and to our director who offered their talents and their points of view on the play throughout. After today's performance, we'll have a conversation with all the artists and we'll take your questions at that time. Here's how you can send us a question at the bottom of your screen. You'll see a button marked Q&A. When you click that, you'll open a text box into which you can type a question for the panel. You can do that at any point during the conversation. The panelists, the cast will see the questions, but your fellow attendees won't read what you ask. So without further ado, it is my great pleasure to welcome playwright Sanaz Tusi and director Peron Yusefzada. Come on and join me. There you are. Hi. Hi. So, how are you both? Great. So happy to be here. Wonderful. So I am just going to give a quick little bit of bios here. Sanaz was our 2019 Playwriting Fellow, and she has not one, but two world premieres on the horizon once live theater returns. Wish You Were Here at Playwrights Horizons and English at Roundabout Underground. She's a member of Youngblood and the Middle Eastern American Writers Lab at The Lark and an alum of Club Thumb's Early Career Writers Group. Perone is currently the Associate Artistic Director and Director of Engagement at Jiva Theatre Center. She's also a founding member of Maya Directors, a consulting group for artists and organizations engaging with stories from the Middle East and beyond. Recent projects include the world premiere of Kid Prince and Pablo by Brian Quijada at the Kennedy Center. And she has directed and developed work at The Public, Playwrights Horizons, New York Theatre Workshop, Soho Rep, and many, many others. Sanaz and Peron, welcome. I'm so happy to have you here with me today. And Sanaz, I'm going to put my first question to you. In addition to writing The Persians, you are also acting in it, which has been such an exciting part of this process for all of us. Could you tell everyone a little bit what was your way into exploring this story and how did the prospect of playing one of the roles yourself factor into that? Um. I hope it's been good for everyone. Acting is really hard. I just want to say I respect all our actors and I now definitely, I don't take what you do lightly. Um, I don't know. I maybe like many of you have had a lot of time, a lot of thinking. Um, I've done a lot of thinking during the pandemic about 
you know, what would feel exciting to me in the future? Like when the future returned, which I think it is now returning, like what, I don't know, how, what did I want that to look like for myself? And with any play, I think I always, um, it always comes from a place of what I, what I wanna see on stage or hear. And I felt for the first time that I really wanted to see my version of, a, of an Iranian family. And this is my version, right? So like Iranians watching might not be your family, um, but I hope there's something, something recognizable. And to me, an Iranian family is like, so that meant I wanted to see dancing on stage and I wanted to see, um, you know, like a total lack of boundaries and a love that is very overwhelming. Um, and in terms of acting, um, as Yalda, I'll be playing Yalda. I just have never, I think I've ever written anyone as that I understood so um, just like in my body. I've never written a character that I understood so deeply before. Um, and then I also was like, whatever, let's just do it. <laughs> as I think you have to do with scary, scary choices. So yeah, that's it. Yes, I love it. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. And a reminder to the audience who's joined us live, you can type in questions for the team at any point. And after we hear an excerpt from the play, we'll get a chance to answer many of them. At this point, if you're watching on YouTube more than four days after we recorded this, the video will jump to the Q&A. And so now I'm going to go over to Perone. Could you provide a little bit of background for the moment when the play begins, the holiday that it takes place during, and just to set this up for the folks who are about to watch it with us. Sure, yeah. So the excerpt that we're going to share is the first 20 minutes or so of the play, right from the very beginning. It is March of 2016. Um, and uh, the family is celebrating the Iranian New Year, also known as Noruz, which lands on the vernal equinox in March. Um, uh, fun fact slash something to know about Noruz that it's customary um, to set up what's known as the half scene, which is an arrangement of symbolic objects, um, uh, seven primary ones that are arranged on a table. Um, there are other objects that can also be added to the half scene. Um, and they include things like um, apples and vinegar and garlic and a few other things that all have different symbolic meanings um, for the, the new year ahead that the family is ushering in. And with that, I'm going to um, introduce our actors who are going to bring be turning their cameras on as I introduce them. Uh, first, uh, Barzin Aravan, who will be playing Masoud. Um, Sahar Bibian, who will be playing Shadi. Uh, Abraham Makani, who will be playing Bijan. Uh, Nazanin Noor, who will be playing Azadeh, also known as Ozzy. And of course, Sanaz Tusi playing Yalda. Enjoy, everyone. Thank you so much. That was wonderful. Do you all want to come back on screen with me, Peron? Two. We're uh, we're gonna do a quick Q and A now. I've got a couple to start with, and then we'll dig into the audience ones. So please don't be shy. Use the Q and A box, and we will answer our your questions. You know, we got a bit of an echo here, so just bear with us. So Sena's first question, first question for you, my dear. Most of your plays have been set in Iran. This is the first to focus on an Iranian American family living in the United States. So I was wondering if you could tell folks a little more about how this play is a departure from your previous work and what you're hoping to achieve with it. Ooh, I don't know. Um, yeah, it is my first work that's in, um, you know, not only the States, but in LA and I was raised in Orange County. Um, um, I, I just, I don't think I could have written something like this until now. I've, I think I've, in some way, I've always been like, when you do this, Sanaz, it has, you have to do it right. So make sure that you're the best writer that you can be when you do it. And I'm, you know, not the best writer that I ever will be, but I just felt ready 
I just felt ready now. Um, I forgot the rest of the question. Did I, do you think I answered it? <laughs> no, you answered it. That's great. Okay, cool. And you. speaking of Orange County, speaking of Los Angeles, so this play is, sent, is set in the Brentwood neighborhood where there's a, such a big Persian community that it's actually been nicknamed Tarantulas. So what can all of you tell us about the very particular setting of this play and how it informs the characters? Should, should I go? I Dump know. in. No, we talked okay. about this a lot at rehearsal. There were lots of strong opinions. <laughs> I know there were very strong opinions about what an LA Persian is versus an East Coast Persian. I thought that was hilarious. I mean, the thing I find defining about being an LA Persian is that you, you, you grow up with a lot of people around you that share, um, you know, a history, a language, sometimes a religion not ri or not. Um, but I think really, I mean, honestly, the, to grow up where I did, it's you even grow up with people who look like you and people who know how to say your name. And I think that's a really, um, you know, to be some, from somewhere that's named Tehrangelis where you can, you know, where there are blocks where uh, you don't have to know Farsi, I'm sorry, you don't have to know English. Um, I think that's the perfect setting for this play. That's also about like how in the end it's still not home and how you can do everything in a way to be, um, to make a life for yourself that feels comfortable and that it's good and affluent and, and how it can be a good life, but it's still, um, it's not the place you left. You know, it's not the place you grew up. Yeah. And we've had we've had such an incredible rehearsal process together over the past couple of weeks. Sanaz gifted us with so many new pages and rewrites as we learned more about the characters and about this story. Um, so Perone, could you share a little about how you guided this uniquely collaborative process with Sanaz and the actors here? Yeah, sure. Um... I mean, I think that, you know, when you're working on such rich material that of course always begs a lot of really in-depth discussion. And um, that was, I think a lot of how we, how we spent our time and everyone in this company um, is Iranian slash Iranian American. And so, you know, we're all bringing a lot of life experience and a lot of just like the expertise of lived experience to the work. Um, and so in, um, in talking about these characters and in trying to understand their motivations and their impulses, there is this also this beautiful inevitable way that like cultural dramaturgy starts to come into the conversation about like, you know, uh, taking those things we've observed and experienced in our own families to see if that helps us understand the framework or if that can inform um, or inspire something for Sanaz that can then um, take shape in a rewrite. And so there's something really um, satisfying about that sense of shared understanding. Um, and I think that it's been a combination of living in that space as well as um, really just digging into the text for, um, for clues and seeing what happens if we lean into certain dynamics or play up certain ideas um, and to see how that might help lift things off the page, um, both, both for the draft as it currently exists and also to inspire future iterations. And I was hoping at this point that we could have each of the each of the actors tell us a little bit about their character. Every character on this play is on his or her own journey towards or away from Iran, carving out an identity somewhere along the spectrum of Iranian Americans. So I'd love to hear from everyone about their their character a bit. Um, Sahar, could we begin with you and Shadi? Sure, absolutely. Um... So I think uh, with Shadi, she's, uh, uh, I, I love that um, how she's portrayed and how much truth is 
as far as I think what Iranian women go through and what I've experienced is a lot of stuffing down of a lot of things, their, their memories and their experiences. And so uh, I think for Shadi, it's, uh, she's mourning. Uh, it's a death of something. She's mourning, uh, you know, being away from her country, not being able to see her mom and dad, uh, um, except for a one-time visit. Um, being here and losing her family uh, and not being able to be, be there for their death. Um, and trying to preserve being Iranian and hanging on to being Iranian, you know, uh, how she teaches Yalda Farsi, it, it, you know, it's, it's a really beautiful thing. I think sometimes you see in Persian families where, you know, they want you to be completely American and they don't want, want any of that. Sometimes there's, um, quite the opposite where they don't want to you know, conform to being American at all. So it's really fascinating to see in the play um, how Shadi is trying to preserve being Iranian, you know? And it's also the dynamic between her and Masood, how they remember things, which is so true to Iranian families, except, you know, in, in my experience. Um, and it's just complicated, you know, it's the complicated relationships, the dynamic between, you know, her relationship with her kids, the younger one, the middle child, the one that's born here, the one that's born in Iran, um, and uh, dealing with, with uh, trauma and, um, and trying to find her voice, you know? Uh, I think that's the I think that's the most important thing with Shadi is how she finds her voice, you know, um, not just by being a mom or being, you know, uh, a wife, but for herself, finding the voice for herself and finding the truth for herself. So it's really beautiful as far as that and her journey. That's wonderful, Sahar. Thank you. What about you, Bazin, with Masood? Uh, it was such a treasure and treat to be able to, beyond that, I can't even put into words what this week has meant to be with um, such a talented group of people working with such an incredible writer and incredible director and obviously production um, team. But um, for Masood, is you know, um, um, uh, um, a just past the turn of like midlife, you know, uh, man who is the embodiment of a successful uh, immigrant story, both of them, but you know, even though it's not, we've kind of haven't uh, really looked at maybe what Shadi's profession is, but mass, their classic immigrant success stories of coming here under dire circumstances, uh, extreme dire circumstances, economically, and most of all, emotionally, because they had to leave family behind, which is at the crux of this story, about how you deal with the feelings, uh, what those feelings are, guilt, regret, all those things, about what you had to leave behind in order to come here and what that price was. Uh, especially if you're successful. I think that's the one thing that look at, and these people have become successful. We, you didn't get to, you know, the uh, viewing audience tonight didn't, uh, didn't get to see some of the play, but, you know, we find out that they came to the United States with $7 to their name. Um, and now, as you heard in the opening description, live in a very affluent neighborhood with very nice things, all the successful things that you would envision of becoming um, um, an American. So um, in the classic sense of what we see is a, a successful American story, uh, people pulling themselves up by their bootstraps and getting here. And the beauty of Sonos's work, she's also uh, underlying what costs are those and, and what prices do we pay uh, as family people? So here's a man that loves his wife deeply, loves his children deeply and wants to see them succeed and is kind of frustrated to see that they are stuck uh, in ruts and wants to figure out how to get two of them unstuck. One of them is really successful and I think he's really happy with uh, the, the path of her life. His, his eldest daughter, I think, is, uh, is what he envisions uh, to be um, as a success story to him, totally. Not that the other two aren't. Uh, the other two are just kind of in a holding pattern 
uh, that aren't fully formed all the way there. Uh, but the important thing is, is he loves them dearly. Uh, and he just isn't very good as human beings are, we're all fallible about um, fixing uh, these relationships, if you will. And the main one is with his wife, uh, because that's where the, you know, the real um, battle lies between them is do you, what do you love more, I guess. And um, with all relationships, um, you grow and you evolve. And some people, uh, not to use a cliche term, grow apart and that's okay. Uh, it's just the pain of that and examining it. Thank you so much, Fazim. Beautiful. Nazanin, what about you with Ozzy? Um, I feel like, again, we just got a glimpse, of course, but Ozzy has um, her experience and her relationship and bond to her family and to her cultural and ethnic identity are different because she actually was born in Iran and then she came to America and that creates, I feel like just all of us as Iranian Americans have this balance that we play on a daily basis where it's like, are we gonna be, do we have to be more American in this scenario? Are we gonna be more Iranian? But we're never this enough and we're never that enough um, all the time. And I think that's just something that you get to a point of where, and I think ozzy has gotten to this point too. It feels like that she, knows that she's always going to be in that middle ground and a lot of people um I don't know I feel like her siblings haven't figured that part out yet and so that's one place that they don't see eye to eye on and then you know she has a very complicated and flawed relationship with her mother that starts you know becoming clear which I also think is really indicative of pretty much every Iranian who had to immigrate to America and who has a daughter. I feel like there's just always, we all have this commonality of maybe very similar issues and where they stem from, from our mom's backgrounds and us having to grow up in this American society, but with our Iranian culture and identity always being like, don't forget, don't forget you're Iranian. We do everything Iranian, you know? So I think that Ozzy pushes back on that a lot because um, of the way that she had to come to America and what that means to her. Um, which is a really beautiful, interesting exploration throughout the entirety of the story that Sanos wrote. Um, and yeah, I think she, she just has, she has a flawed but loving relationship with her identity, but it's like she tries to keep it at arm's length all the time, whereas her other family members, uh, particularly her siblings and her mom, are like wanting to embrace it so tight. It feels like so that they never forget it or it doesn't go away or erase. And Ozzy's more like, yeah, okay, I've had enough, you know? It's interesting. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, Abraham, what can you tell us about Bijan, the middle child? Bijan, man. He, I think he's a really cool dude, you know? Um, like you said, he's the, he's the, he's the middle child. Um, and, uh, you know, I mean, I'm not a middle child, but my experience of, of middle children and if anybody in the audience is one and you know not to you know stereotype them but they kind of have like uh you know a, a space where they're they, they don't they don't have the position that like the baby of the family has or like the, the the oldest sibling has they're kind of in my mind you know searching for that position um and bijan you know as someone who was born in in Houston, um, and then they moved to Brentwood and all that, you know, he he's he's kind of searching for you know what what is his culture like being American, being Iranian, being both, you know, feeling uh, longing for for Iran, a country that he's never been to because his parents can't go back, uh, you know, for political reasons, right? Um, so. Yeah, he's just someone, you know, an explorer trying to find his way, even though he's kind of, you know, halfway, like found, you know, a job that, that can pay well and all that stuff. But he still is trying to find what it is to 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 be Iranian and American and uh, and yeah, and do right by his parents when, uh, you know, he he thinks he hasn't done right by them, his parents feel like maybe he has you know and it's, it's always that that dynamic of of searching like yeah I really love this dude so yeah 
Thank you. And Sanaz, tell us about Yalda. I don't know if my answer is going to be nearly as el just eloquent and insightful. Our actors are so amazing. I just have to say this, like this cast is so, so amazing. Um, well, Yanda's the baby and she has been babied. She's been doodled, tallowed. She's been cuddled um, in so many ways. She's the one who, um, you know, Ozzy was born in Iran and then the family landed in Houston and then LA and then, you know, Brentwood, like by Brentwood, I mean, like they were rich then. Um, Bijan didn't. Bijan was in Houston and he didn't always grow up with the family being um, well off. But Yalda has. So she hasn't known a lot of, in so many ways, she's grown up so lucky. You know, she's never wanted for anything. She's spoiled. She's fucked up a lot. Like she's got a DUI and still her mom babies her. Um, and I think Yalda's journey is um, what she does with, with her mother's love in this play, I think changes as the scenes progress. Love in this play, we've talked about this in rehearsal, love in this play is like very overwhelming and um, heavy sometimes. And I think for Yalda, she has to figure out like, how do I honor what my parents went through how do I learn their, their language? How do I learn through their traditions? Um, but have a healthy boundary for myself. So I don't carry, so she doesn't have to carry that pain with her the rest of her life. I think, I mean, we'll, we'll get it there eventually. Oh yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. Well, we'll get it there. <laughs> it's going, it is going. Thank you all for telling us more about your characters' arcs. And we've been getting some fantastic questions in from the audience. So uh, now, Sanaz, I want to pass on this question about the bilinguality of your work. You write in English and in Farsi. You combine them in various ways. You've worked with collaborators who have varying degrees of bilinguality. Could you tell us some more about how you use Farsi in your writing? Um, hi, Danny. Uh, how do I use Farsi in my writing? This is such a good question. So I, um, I have to like this question. This this part about um, do you ever feel like you're compromising on the truth of your characters? What what they would say in order to make the play clear to an American audience is such a good question. And I think a goal with of that. I'm sorry. One of my goals for this play, and I think actually a reason that I had not been able to write this play yet is because now I just don't care so much anymore if the non-Iranians in the audience are gonna understand. Cause I just feel like whether it's like I'm bold enough now or I'm at a place in my career where I can just be like, I don't, I don't care if the non-Iranians aren't understanding it because this is an invitation for Iranians to you know um, enter the theater all are welcome, none are safe. <laughs> um, and a chance to be with them and put ourselves on stage and be like, celebrate us and also roast us a little bit. Um, I have to, my first drafts has to be, ha they just have to be in like English so I can kind of funnel whatever raw emotion is happening. And then I always have to, I have to do a pass later with, um, to add the Farsi in there. So I really, there will be so much more Farsi in the play. Um, and I think about that all the time. Thank you for asking that. Um, that's such a, that's such a valuable question because I think it's actually about like who we, so who, knowing what the American theater is or has been, who are we, who are we writing for? Yeah. Mm. I would love to just like, chime in with something here on this too it's like I I often hear I I totally appreciate the question and I think it's something we're definitely going to be continuing to investigate I also think that you know um like when watching great opera you don't want your eyes to be on the subtitles you want to be able to watch the story and be able to and I mean my favorite experiences at the opera um 
all of which have not been English language operas, um, have been um, when I didn't really have to, I, when I when I could still capture the essence, when I could capture the essence of what was happening from what I was watching on stage and I didn't have to rely on the subtitles in order to understand the basic plot, but I could glance at them if I wanted to know like the specific details of language. And I feel like we don't necessarily in the American theater afford the same <laughs> sort of I like standard to work by global majority playwrights. And if the, like, if the plays are not in like French or Italian or German, then like there is this question. And, I, and, I, and I'm curious about how we can, especially, you know, following what people have termed as a racial reckoning in the American theater, crack open this idea of language and decolonize a little bit um, of our assumptions around um, what has to be quote unquote clear for an English speaking American audience and also what clarity means. And that, I mean, and I also find Farsi such an expressive language and, and like it, there isn't really like stoicism to speaking Farsi. So I think it's actually ripe for a non-Farsi speaker to understand what's happening, even if they don't necessarily know word for word what's being said. I just want to just uh, jump in real quick and just say, I still feel like this is inviting, you know, an, a non-Farsi speaking audience, you know, to the table. It's like you come to, to a, a Persian family, you might not, you know, you're, you're getting a glimpse into the window of what it would be, right? To have dinner, a no rules New Year dinner with a Persian family. You're not gonna understand everything, <laughs> but you're gonna feel that, that energy and that love. That's what I think. And the last thing I'll say is like, Yalda I think is kind of brilliantly a conduit for a non-Farsi speaking audience. Um, because she's asking, you know, and she's learning. And, um, uh, and, and the fact that within the family, there are different levels of Farsi, like fluency and comprehension, I think is also very true. To, it's very true to an Iranian family. I mean, I'm, I'm the youngest with like, the most difficult time speaking it. <laughs> um, and so and, and, and that ranges within me and my siblings. Um, but I also think it, um, yeah, offers a kind of gateway to a non-Farsi speaker. They'll learn. They'll they'll learn what's on the half scene as Yaldo's learning it in the first scene. I'm gonna say to uh, to what Bijan was saying. I all my American friends only wanted to come to my house for anything, and uh, I was always afraid they weren't gonna understand my mom. But but they understood. But they were like. I think like the, but it was always when they first came, they were like, um, are you guys fighting? And I was like, no, 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 that's how we talk. And they loved it because there's so much expression and there's so much, there's musicality. And as they were around us, they, my, my uh, American friends understood. And it was also so fascinating to me because it is such a musical, expressive, you talk with your hands, there's so much inflection that somehow they communicated and they understood. And now they live in Tehranjala, so half of them are learning Farsi. So there you go, we've invaded. <laughs> right, well, that is a, that's sort of a wonderful note to end on, a note of invitation, an invitation into the world of the play and these characters and invitation that hopefully we will be seeing a lot more of this play in the not too distant future in a live theater when we can all occupy the same space together. So I want to thank you all so much for attending. Thank you for being here. Thank you to our actors, Barzin, Sahar, Abraham, Nazanin. Thank you, Peron, and thank you, Sanaz. Thank you to our awesome stage manager, Jess Aguilar. And 
Thank you so much to everyone who joined us today, Page 73 supporters. We were so glad to share this conversation with you to cap off what has been such a wonderful, memorable two weeks of work. And if you know someone who would appreciate this conversation, a link of the recording of this will be emailed to you and it will be available at page73.org starting tomorrow. So we are going to sign off now. We wish you a wonderful evening. It's a beautiful evening in New York. I hope it's nice wherever everyone else is as well. Thank you so much and have a good evening.